Hi and welcome to today's tutorial. We're going to cover the installation process for NetSupport Manager PC Remote Control. As you can see on the screen we have the main installation wizard that's just started on our computer and we've run this from the setup file that we've downloaded from the NetSupport Manager website. Let's jump our way through the process. So we select next on our installation guide and the first thing it asks us to do is to accept the terms and agreements of the NetSupport license. Following on, we're then presented with our license information window. Now there's two approaches here. The first is to leave it exactly as it is, and you'll see that this will install the product with its 30-day evaluation key. The evaluation software for all NetSupport products allows full functionality for the duration of the evaluation period. Um, and in the case of this installation here with NetSupport Manager, we can either leave it as our 30-day eval, or if we've already purchased the software and we have our license information already supplied to us, we can select the register button where we can fill in our licensee information and activate the software there and then. Don't worry if you don't have your registration information at the moment. We'll show you at the end of the installation how you can subsequently activate your software with your license information once you've made your purchase. We'll leave it as our eval for now and we'll jump to next and you'll see we're given a selection of installation options. So we have our typical, what we think will be the most likely installation where we'll install our client and control software. And for clarification, the control software is the software that's used to perform remote control. The client software is installed on each PC that you wish to be able to remote control, as well as our configurator, remote deployment utilities, and so on. If the PC is only ever going to be used to be remote controlled by somebody else in the organization, then we can do a client-only installation. And typically, all computers in your company would run the client, and selected computers would run the control software for those staff that will be providing the remote management. Or we can do custom, where we can pick and choose the features we want. For the purpose of showing you through this installation guide, we'll use custom. And you'll see we now have a full list of all the functionality available. So let's take a quick run through of what those features are. Our client software, as I suggested, is installed on each and every PC that you wish to be able to remote control. And if you've upgraded from NetSupport School, our classroom instruction and monitoring solution, to NetSupport Manager, you'll note we have the option to include our student component on the client. In other words, if you choose to use NetSupport Manager rather than School, it will provide you with full access to all of the same features and functions available in NetSupport School as well. If you've never heard of NetSupport School and you're simply here to evaluate NetSupport Manager, then this basically highlights to you that as well as giving you a corporate-wide remote control solution included in the product at no extra charge is a classroom training and instruction tool, which again can be very useful within the corporate environment. We have a configurator option. As the name suggests, this is a tool that's provided to allow us to configure our client and um, software on the network, set our security parameters, what features are available, and so on. And in many cases, the configurator we don't want to provide to each and every user. We have our control software, which is used by the technicians to perform remote control. And again, within the classroom management side, if we wanted to, we could also install our classroom management, our teacher and our technician's console tools. We have a gateway component provided with NetSupport Manager for free. And our gateway is provided as a central point for ensuring we have the ability to provide connectivity between local and remote computers um, over the internet or through our secure firewall and it takes our traditional TCP communications and allows us to communicate over HTTP securely. We have a remote deployment utility for use across our local area network and the remote deployment utility allows us to browse and discover computers over our Windows network or using TCP IP address ranges. Once machines have been discovered we can choose to push out the setup file and perform a remote installation of our software we can push out our newly purchased license keys. We can also create and set our configuration on one computer and then use the deployment utility to push out our configuration file to everybody else. Worth bearing in mind at that point, if you have Active Directory 
we do also provide AD templates so that you can automatically apply your configuration um, at all times across the network. And we also have a scripting tool, and the scripting tool allows us to, as the name suggests, create routines, um, scripts, and processes and procedures that can then be run on a regular basis within the product. Um, again, we'll cover that later on. Similarly, we have control here as to which desktop items we're going to install, as well as some of the menu items we want to make available. So for now, to make it nice and simple, we'll go with a let's tick everything for net support, and we'll have a standard def default desktop and start menu icons. Let's click next, and as you can probably see, the wizard now is just going to take us through the installation process. We'll skip through this rather than let you sit and watch the progress bar as it moves along. Okay, and our installation wizard has completed there. And for the purpose of this video, I've saved you a, a couple of minutes whilst that progress bar ran through. And we can say finish. And perhaps not surprisingly, we now have a NetSport Manager control that's installed. And because we've selected the gateway installation, for the first time, it's going to prompt and ask us to provide our configuration and setup. And we're going to cover that in a separate tutorial. So once we've done the installation, you'll see we have our NetSport Manager control software, and we've also installed our client software. And if we have a look in our All Programs NetSport Manager, you'll see we have our configurator, our control, our deployment tool, our scripting editor and agent, and our NetSport video player. So all of our tools are provided and included as standard in the product. Okay, let's have a look at the process now once we've installed our control for how we can deploy out our software to our other computers on the network. So we run the NetSport Manager deployment tool. Say yes to that. And you'll see we've now got a new deployment wizard that is open for us. And the concept with the deployment wizard is either to browse our Windows network or we can specify to search for computers over a certain TCP IP range and we can simply select those computers and then push out a package of our choice. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, I've just cut a couple of quick steps there and as you can see on the screen here, I've specified a deployment range. And if we look at the menu up here, we can add our IP domain. In this case, I've chosen this range of 201 to 208 as IP addresses and you'll see it's now scanned the network and given me a list of computers that it's found within that IP range. The blue PC icon denotes it's located a computer and you'll see we've actually got some computers running a, a current version of the NetSport Manager or NetSport School clients. So if we want to deploy something to these machines we can simply select a selection of computers that we think are appropriate and if we right click we have a deploy option and you'll see we can deploy a full NetSport Manager package and that package would be a setup file along with a set of variables which components we wish to install and so on. The client configuration file so again if we've made the effort to set up the specific configuration requirements for our client we can then push that out to all computers. Our license file so if you remember at the beginning of this tour we had the option to either enter our license details or run as an eval well, if we've reached the point now where we've purchased the product, we've got our full license details, we can now push those through as a license file, as well as remotely sending an uninstall command to those computers. If we select a NetSport Manager package, you'll see that we have a little summary here of what the package is, and we can look at our properties, and it's NetSport Manager, and it's going to be installed to our default folder using an NSM INI file for our parameters. So let's take a quick look at the parameters and you'll see by default, if we push this package out now, it will install a client on each computer. We could install, for example, a control as well, or the client and a configurator, and so on. So you can control here exactly which elements of the product you would wish to install remotely, and we won't bother saving those configuration parameters. You'll also see here, we can now look at some options. Shall we skip machines that are already running NetSport Manager? Should we update new or older systems up to the current version of NetSport? Shall we verify and check the client's running once it's been deployed and restarted? Let's install the product immediately. Perhaps we should make sure we warn the user on each desktop PC that's having a remote deployment done before we install it. And perhaps for a, during the daytime when staff are working on other applications, give the option for the user to postpone the installation up to X number of times. 
Similarly, let's make sure we can display a message to staff if we're deploying onto their machines. And also, how do we want to handle a restart? Now, by default, when you install Netsport Manager, it shouldn't need a restart unless you've installed some of the more subtle components. But again, we have an option here to say, only if required, advise the user to restart a machine, insist they restart the machine, or simply force a restart. So you can see very simple set of parameters to allow you to push out your Netsport software across your network with a minimum of fuss and effort. So we'll say OK there and you'll see our software is pretty much ready to go and we can hit the deploy button and the job will be done for us. OK, I've missed out a couple of steps but I've lo opened my local explorer and I've browsed to the Netsport Manager folder where I've installed my software and as you can see it's on our C drive, program files, Netsport, Netsport Manager. And if you browse through the folder, you will see that there is a file called pcilic.exe. And if we run the this file here, you'll see it's our license management utility. At the current time, my software is running an evaluation copy. That's what I've downloaded and installed with you today. If I've now purchased my software, I have the ability here to enter the serial number, the number of clients, the computers that I have purchased my license for, my licensee name, and this will almost always be the name of your organization, and the authorization key that I have been supplied with. And this will allow me to create and generate my license file for my purchase software. Once I've created that license file, which is created in a file called nsm.lic, my software is then active. And as we've shown you in the deployment utility, we can push that license file out to all the other computers on the network so they all carry my permanent license. Simple as that.